Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the One Thing Podcast. We're so excited to have Caitlin Spears here. Caitlin is a certified health and nutrition coach. You all, you all have probably gotten to see her online, has a huge presence and following, and also the founder of Complete by Caitlin and the Look Good, Feel Good program. Caitlin, we are so excited to have you. Thank you for having me. I'm very excited to be here. I want to get into a little bit of the impetus of what you've created, this empire that you've created from what sounds like a little bit of a, a hard situation when you were just 18, so young, when you were 18, you had a really painful rejection experience with America's Next Top Model, that, which you know went on to sounds like really affect your relationship with food, with your health. I'd love for you to walk us through that and like tell us about that actual experience and then kind of what it, what it led to. Yeah, absolutely. First of all, thank you for calling it an empire. I would like to call it maybe like a three-story building, but it's on its way up. <laughs> I started it from the ground. So nothing is built overnight. Um, but with hard work, I know that one day it will be an empire. So for clarification, for anyone who doesn't know me, I have an awesome business that I love, but it didn't start with me owning this business, helping women all over the world um, live healthier and happier lives. I think that it all started when I had my own experience with health and body image and just the sense of, of not feeling like I was worth anything. And I think a lot of women can relate to that because we live in a, in a world where society puts such high standards on women. So at 18 years old, I was actually um, reached out to by some of the head casting directors at America's Next Top Model. I actually thought it was a scam because I am from a town of 2,500 people in Oklahoma. I grew up on a cow farm, middle of nowhere. Walmart was 45 minutes away. So when they reached out, I was like, there's absolutely no way that they're reaching out to me. But it was real. Um, I did the entire casting process, jumped through hoops, months and months of like rigorous casting, getting passports, NDAs. And a week before filming um, the season that would have been filmed in 2014, they actually emailed me and let me know that they had decided to cut me and that they think I need to work on my body and try again next season. And I just remember being so devastated because I had, you know, been thinking and dreaming and talking about this for, it had been like a six month process. And I thought my whole life was about to change. And then from that moment on for the next few years, what that one person told me affected my whole life. Mm. I'd love to hear, like, I, I think this is so prevalent because if someone's listening to this and they're, and they're saying to themselves like, well, yeah, but I'm not like being casted for America's Next Top Model. And yet I think about there's so much pressure for men and women, especially in this in this world of social media, where it's just really easy to be scrutinized, but it's also really easy to be lied to, right? Like you you never know what the image you're looking at is. And there's a lot of perspective on I sort of love when like the celebrities of the world share the comment section of like, you're too skinny, you're too fat, you're sort of damned if you do and damned if you don't. And, uh, and I'd love to hear your perspective on, on how you took that feedback and how you sort of self-discovered that you didn't need to live there. Because I think that can happen, whether it's with your body, whether it's with your work, whether it's with the business that you're starting, we can all get this feedback that, that just feels so soul crushing and can be so defining. And yet you chose not to stay there, which I think is the differentiator in, in what your future ends up becoming. I'd love for you to talk through that. Yeah. So, you know, I, I love to share because I, I think when people first hear my story, it feels very non-relatable, right? Unless you're a model or unless you're maybe a celebrity and you've been been cut from a huge show or just, but, it, but it's so relatable in the sense of I was just a normal girl. I was a girl who grew up on a cow farm in the middle of nowhere An opportunity presented itself. I thought my life was going to change and it didn't. And I think everybody can equate that, like you said, to a business idea that you have that maybe you start and it fails, a job you're interviewing for, like literally anything in your life that you want really, really bad and you get this like amazing opportunity and then someone just takes it away from you. So I think that I want everyone to know that like it is relatable in a sense of like I was also just a normal person. I'm still just a normal person who got handed a life changing experience, but I didn't go on that journey because that journey wasn't for me. And so if anyone listening is is thinking, man, 
I'm going through this right now. Know that that path was never meant for you and keep searching. Keep trying to figure out what your path is because we were all put on this earth to do incredible, incredible things. It just hasn't revealed itself to you yet. So for me, it was, I think it took me about three and a half years um, of dealing with body dysmorphia, an eating disorder where I would literally hide food under my bed. I, I lived by myself part of this time. And like, who am I hiding it from? Myself? It was a toxic relationship with who I thought I needed to be. And What I discovered in those three and a half years together was I had really lost myself. I was raised to be a strong, independent person who showed up and did her best at whatever she showed up to do. But for three and a half years, that girl got really buried. She got buried underneath the first rejection that she ever faced in her adulthood life. Because when you turn 18, life hits you in the face and you've got to learn how to keep going. And so I think I remember, I tell this story all the time. I was sitting in my Mini Cooper at college. I hated everything I was doing. I didn't want to be in school. I didn't want to be around the friends that I was hanging around. I didn't want to be doing the things that I was doing, but I was just in such a toxic, unhealthy space. I had no money. I had nowhere to turn. I had no one helping me. And so all I was doing was having a pity party right? I was having a pity party about, oh, poor me. And I was sitting in the my Mini Cooper outside of a gym. And I was like, you know what? I've been crying in this car for three hours. And I am feeling exhausted, confused, scared, and alone. So I've got two options. I can either stay here in this car and keep coming back and keep crying and keep doing the, oh, poor me, Or I can figure out who I really am without all this noise, without somebody else telling me who I am, that I'm not good enough, I'm not skinny enough, I'm not pretty enough. I don't even know who I am because I haven't gone on that self-discovery path yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give myself a chance to find out who I am. And from that day on, it was a battle. It was a battle of taking one step forward, getting 1% better every single day. And that meant learning to love myself where I was at in my journey, not where I wanted to be in my journey. And it's hard. It's, you know, people look at me now and they're like, oh, it must have come so easy. And I'm like, you're seeing me 11 years later. It was really, really tough. But All the self-work I did for the past decade is the reason that I'm able to have a business where I now get to help other women who are going through similar things, who don't feel like they're good enough, in a sense, become the best version of themselves. Mm. Caitlin, I'd love to hear your advice for someone else who's there, because I don't think it matters at what stage of our lives. I think we've all, and I bet... You've had multiple stages of this where you just sort of look up and you're like, I love how Sarah Blakely says it. She she always says, like, I was just in the wrong movie. Like you looked up one day and you're like, I'm in the wrong movie. Like I'm I'm not in the right place. I don't like who I'm hanging out with. I don't like who how I'm feeling. I don't like what I'm doing. And I think people just get stuck there. Like they they sort of have that realization and then they're like, Well, what do I do about it? <laughs> what 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 do I do now? What's your advice to somebody who's feeling that way? You know, I think that you are the only person who can make things change. So if you're looking for someone else to come and help you do it, it's never going to happen. You have to make a decision one day that this is not the life you want. And then you have to show up every single day for whatever version of life you think you want, right? I think someone told me, if you want to be a millionaire, you have to start showing up as that millionaire. If you want to be a model, you have to start showing up as that model. If you want to be an entrepreneur, you have to start showing up as that entrepreneur that you want to be because those people didn't get where they are by sitting around doing the same things that keep you where you're currently at. So if you don't like where you're at, you absolutely have the power to make the changes. It's just change is hard. And we as human beings 
don't like to do hard things. So I would say get comfortable with being really, really uncomfortable. Get comfortable with being alone. I spent years doing this on my own. Now, I'm not saying asking for help is bad because it's absolutely, you can always ask for help, but there are certain things in your life that you have to do alone. You have to figure out who you are at your core to know where you're supposed to be going. How are you supposed to know the direction you should be headed if you don't even know who you are and what you want? Because all you've ever listened to are the people around you, your family, your friends, your loved ones, the toxic people you're hanging out with at college, the toxic people in your work environment. Maybe you're in an unhealthy relationship. Those are the people that you become because you're the, you are the five people you surround yourself with, right? Mm. So get uncomfortable with being uncomfortable. Surround yourself with different people. Your environment is everything. So if you don't like where you're at, get a new environment. And I don't mean like, I know we can't all just jump up and move homes and, but you have the ability to determine the people you spend your time with. You have the ability to say today, I'm going to do the things that I said I would do yesterday. You have that ability. You just have to do it. Mm. You said something I think so important with recognizing who you are, but also who you want to be. And I think it's so powerful and curious how maybe you discovered or you help other people recognize like who they are and what matters most to them, like locate themselves today to get clarity and then also connect it to uh, what is the future version of myself and what that looks like for you. I think, you know, we have so many different versions of ourselves that we go through. The version of me who I was at 18 and the version of me who I am today at 29 years old is so different. And I've had, you touched on it earlier, you said you probably go through this multiple times in your life. And there was a point where all I wanted to do was be a model. And what I found out in later years was it's what I thought I wanted to be because I had put my whole identity into becoming a model because society or this person told me I couldn't. So I wanted to be it so badly to prove everyone else wrong. And instead of focusing on what I wanted, I focused so much on what other people expected of me. So that was the direction I went. And and it's not that I regret it, but I learned years later that I wasn't happy. I still was not fulfilled. And it was because I was doing something for other people and not for myself. And that took me years to realize. And that's when I pivoted into going into health. And I had like a a breakdown because I remember thinking, if I leave this career, am I a fraud? Am I a failure? Is everybody going to think that I, I quit because I wasn't good enough? And what I had to realize and what everyone has to realize is, who cares? You Mm. have to block out all the noise because at the end of the day, it's your life. If you're not happy and you're not doing it for you, you'll never be happy doing it. And that's what I like to teach my clients on their health journey because most of the women who come to me, they failed right over and over and over and over and over again. And they don't know what to do. And I immediately ask them, well, what are you doing? And they'll usually tell me, well, I've tried dieting or I I took diet pills or I tried this. And I'm like, did you enjoy it? And they say, well, no, I hated it. I'm like, that is why you failed. And I explained to them when I was on my own journey, the reason that I did, I wasn't successful for so long because I was doing something I hated. So if you try to do something you hate, all the time, over and over and over again, you won't get the same results as if you switch it up and say, hey, I'm going to reevaluate. I'm going to figure out what do I like? What are things that bring me joy? And how can I incorporate those more into my life? And that's going to take you in the direction that you were actually meant to go on because you're no longer listening to other people. You're figuring out who you are and what you actually want. You talked earlier about, and I love this idea, and I think this is this is uh, uh, understated, um, but and and not talked about enough. That sometimes we we project our our 
sort of future into like, I'll be this when, or I'll have this when. It's like, okay, well, I'll do the morning routine when I'm a multimillionaire and have the time to do it. Or I'll, I'll, I'll become this, this health and fitness person when I finally done this. And you talked to earlier about this idea of sort of showing up for this version of your life before that version of your life has shown up. And I yeah. think that's so important because that's the right order, right? You got to show up for that version of your life before that version of your life comes to fruition long before sometimes. And I'd love for you to expand a little bit on how you like shifted this in your own life. Like how did you start showing up for the version of your life that you're living now? And I'd also love for you to talk about what's the version, the future version of Caitlin that you're starting to show up for now. Yeah. You know, I started to realize, um, I got really into reading and, and reading up particularly on super successful people. And if you've ever read up on super successful people in, in any field, whether it's The Rock or it's um, Steve Jobs, right? Doesn't matter what field they were in, they didn't get there overnight, right? They got there by doing the hard crap that no one else wanted to do. They got there by believing in themselves when no one else believed that they could. And so I started to think, well, for years, I've given up after a few weeks, after a few months. I haven't actually wanted to do the hard work. So you've got to get real with yourself, right? Because most of us don't want to do the hard work. We don't want to sit in the suck right? We want instant gratification. We live in a world where at the click of a button, you can make a purchase and it can be at your house in two days. We live in a world where everything is so fast, so instant. You know, you take a shot and you lose 30 pounds in a month. So everybody wants that instant gratification. And I'm here to tell you that long-term happiness, health, and success comes from what you do consistently, not what you do for three weeks. And so when I started to change my mindset from I have to do this to I get to do this, and I know a lot of people say that, but it's, it's really true because how you speak to yourself is the person you become. What you believe you are, you become because our beliefs shape our perception. They shape our life. They shape how we show up in our life. So the first thing I had to do was change my mindset, how I was speaking to myself, if I told myself I'm going to do these things or I'm going to be successful or I will accomplish everything that I've set out to accomplish, I start to think that way. And when I start to really believe it at my core, I make real changes, right? And I didn't make those changes fast. This was years in the making of, okay, I'm going to set realistic and attainable goals because that's another problem. We jump into setting these massive goals for ourselves that take years to accomplish, but we haven't built in those roadblocks or those um, stops on the map that we can hit that keep us going. We need those little wins along the way so that we keep our motivation and our support for ourselves high. So I started learning that I need to set really small, realistic and attainable goals for myself. So if that means at that time, I wanted to get in shape because I wanted to have a modeling career, I wanted to be signed, right? So this could be for anyone, whatever your goal is, you have to create a roadmap of how you're going to get there. So if I have this goal for myself, what can I do? I can start going to the gym three days a week. I can start waking up 30 minutes earlier so that I have time to do a routine. I can start not hanging out with the friends I was hanging out with before and instead maybe join groups in my area that are running groups, walking groups, girl groups, entrepreneur groups. Like there's a group for everyone in this day and age. You have the power to change the community you hang out with. You just have to be willing to get uncomfortable. So start making those little changes. Start showing up and doing the things that you said you were going to do. And I've changed so much in what I even want. I remember when I jumped into my business, it was really successful in the beginning. And I got a little ahead of myself. And I, and I tell this story as like a real life, hey, I can relate to that. I, I was doing really well and I got ahead of myself and I tried to do three or four different things because I was very excited. I had that entrepreneur mindset. I was like, I want to have a course and I want to have my coaching and I want to do an app and I want to do all these things. 
And my business declined because of it. Because again, I was doing what other people told me I should be doing instead of listening to myself and doing the one thing that I started this business doing that made me really successful right off the bat. So I had to have a sit down with myself again for, you know, the third or fourth time in my adulthood life and say, hey, you need to come back to reality. You need to go back to the basics. You need to do what's working and you need to show up for your clients in a real way because these people, they rely on you. They need your help to make a change. And so you're going to have these conversations with yourself over and over and over and over and over again. It's just always going back to the basic fundamentals of getting 1% better every day, showing up as a version of yourself that you want to be in the future. And it ebbs and it flows. Being an entrepreneur is so hard and there's tough days. But if you stick with um, helping other people, I love helping other people. Um, it keeps me motivated. That's what keeps me going is getting to help my clients make real change. Man, you, uh, you're striking a lot of chords in the one thing world with what you just said there. I mean, focus on your one thing, have a big vision, go small, uh, and then line up your dominoes is, is how we would say that. But I mean, you, you, you guys and what you're doing and what we say are very aligned. And I'm curious, I mean, you've got the framework for success. You've got the mindset to kind of do whatever to be successful. What made you choose to go into fitness and, and use all this skill to build that business? It changed my life. Um, it saved my life. It changed my life. It, it's something that I've always been attracted to. I was at when I was at my lowest point, you know, we all kind of have our, our low point or our rock bottom at this point in our life. Right. And so for me, I turned to health and fitness as a way to become happier, to become healthier, to become clearer. And it truly saved my life from the point of being extremely depressed and anxious and alone and sad all the time to being able to slowly incorporate something that was like free therapy for me. I got to go in and release these endorphins that I never even knew existed. I got to find myself again and fitness helped me do that and eating good helped me do that and taking care of my mental and physical health helped me do that. There's something so therapeutic about going outside and going on a walk. There's something so therapeutic about making a good, delicious, nutritious, homemade meal that makes you feel good. When you start to feel really good all the time, you never want to go back to feeling bad. <laughs> the bar gets really high <laughs> and does. sensitive. Yes. Kaylin, I'd love to hear how I always think that it can really being well known and recognized in the fitness industry can sometimes probably lead to challenges. We've, we, we've met people in, in our world and I have personal friends who are well known in that space. And, and some of them do it so beautifully and in such a healthy way. And some of them sort of tend to go backwards in their own body image and their own health journey, because then they're like, well, I have to be perfect in my health because I am the health guru, right? Like I can't ever have a cheat day or I always have to be in the gym. How have you balanced that? Because I imagine that had to creep up for you at some point with having had a history of, of, of sort of what got you into this was struggling with that in the first place. Absolutely. When I was, you know, first on my health journey, it was all about becoming a model, right? So it was, how can I get that model body, that thigh gap, those smaller hips, you know? So for years, yeah, maybe I was healthy. I was doing healthy things, but I wasn't going about it in the right way necessarily because I still had these unhealthy tendencies to try to make my body fit into this mold that it had to fit into to be a quote unquote model. So for years, you know, I, I thought I was like, oh, well, I'm working out. I'm really skinny. I'm really slim. Like I'm really toned. I must be so healthy. And I decided, you know, when I kind of was coming to the end of my modeling journey that 
there was a better way. And we're always learning a, a better way. But I had spent so many years thinking I could only do these workouts. I could only do this type of cardio because I didn't want my hips to get bigger or I, I couldn't gain weight or my thighs would be too big. And it opened me up to this sense of a healthy body. And I started to love my fitness journey more than I ever thought I could. When I was about 25, um, I decided I was getting really burnt out and bored with the old way of doing things. And so I was like, if they don't like me for how I naturally look, still working out, still being healthy, then that's their problem. Mm -hmm. So I started shifting from only doing, you know, high intensity walks and model workouts to lifting heavy weights, to going on the Stairmaster, to doing kickboxing, to doing all these workouts I had never done because I was scared. I was scared my body would change in ways that would make me lose the only source of income I had, right? At that time, I was just modeling. And I think when I started to realize that was when I also started to change directions in my career because I decided I didn't want to have to fit into this mold of a model body anymore. I want to look good. I want to feel good, but I want to do it on my own terms. And I think I look and feel better than I ever have because I wake up every day and I do what makes me happy. And I share that with my community. And the women that work with me are the women that resonate with that, right? I'm not everyone's cup of tea and not everyone's going to want to work with me. And that is totally okay. That is why there's 7 billion people on this planet. You find your person, you get to know them, you like them, you trust them, you work with them. But my people resonate with me because I'm so real you need to do what you love for you. Yes, you need to be healthy. Yes, you need to be happy, but it all ties together. So for me, being able to do whatever workout that I want to do was the greatest thing that I ever started doing or not working out, right? Because you don't always have to feel like working out either. This awareness, I love what you said, like you can't be everything to everybody and knowing what you are, who you are and aligning that with what you do and, and being really true to that. Was that something that you developed through experience to kind of figure out like who your customer was and yeah. any advice you would have for somebody who's trying to go out on this journey and they're trying to figure out like what their niche is and how you discover that? Yes. When I first started my business, I was so afraid to hurt people's feelings. I was so afraid to lose people that they wouldn't want to follow me or they wouldn't want to have me as their coach. But what I came to realize was if I don't niche down, if I don't get really specific and find the people who actually need my service, I'm doing a disservice by telling everybody that I can help them. Because in reality, I, I am very specific. I work with women primarily 24 to 35 years old who deal with confidence issues, hormonal imbalances, weight gain, because that was me. I deal with women who are going through or have gone through similar situations because I can relate, right? We need to be relatable in a sense so we can connect with our clients. So for anyone out there who maybe is wanting to start a business or you're scared of hurting people's feelings or you're scared of losing clients, you're doing a disservice to those people by not niching down, by not getting really, really specific and finding your people. There are enough people to go around. I can promise you there will never be enough health coaches, nutritionists, fitness coaches for there not to be clients to be had. There's so many people out there looking for your service but you're only going to find your right people if you start authentically putting yourself out there in a way that resonates with your true audience. Mm. I mean, without a doubt, the we we work with a lot of people and you know our our 
our niche is, is around goals and a system uh, to mm-hmm. oversimplify, but we get to, uh, to look behind the curtain on so many people's goals and for sure, without a doubt, almost uh, 90% of the time, there's going to be a health goal, a fitness goal there, whether or not they're truly yeah. invested in it. That's up for debate. That's the, the work <laughs> we have to do. Uh, but it's so great because there's so many people are focused on this and for sure it's trending up and there's for sure there's more awareness on the impact of diet, health, how your physical health connects to your mental, all the things you're focused on and you've mentioned. For those people who are on that journey, do you have anything that you would recommend for for them to get started or where they should, how they should implement some early framework to start to get success? Yeah. I mean, if you want to reach your goals, no matter what kind of goal it is, right, you have to have a plan. You have to have an actionable plan that you can take. And I believe that all health and wellness goals start with your why, and then they're created with your action plan, and then they're created with your ability to follow through on the actionable plan that you've set forth. So you have to have routines. So start there. Let's mm. let's just say, let's make up a, a random person. Let's say they're on a health journey and they maybe they are predisposed to their family gets diabetes, maybe they're overweight and they're looking to lose weight, right? So you should sit down and get real with yourself. I do this with every single one of my clients. For seven days, I want you to write down every single thing that you do because you don't mean to lie to yourself, but you do not remember everything that you did, everything you ate, if you worked out, if you didn't, how much sleep you got, if you were stressed that day. Write it all down so you can physically see how you live your normal life. Because I promise you're going to notice patterns that you didn't realize existed. A lot of my clients will say, I drink water all the time. And they'll Mm. do this um, seven-day life journal is what I call it. And they're like, man, I didn't drink any water all week. I'm like, see, when we write it down, we can it simplifies it. We can see it on paper in black and white, what we are and are not doing. So that's step one. And then you can pick out some patterns. If you're not drinking enough water, if you're not getting enough sleep, if you don't go to the gym at all, let's say you're eating out at fast food restaurants five days a week, pick one or two areas. So let's say you wanted to focus on getting more water and going to the gym. Those were your two areas you wanted to work on. So you need to create actionable steps you can take. Do not say, I'm going to go to the gym five days a week and I'm going to drink 100 ounces of water every single day. You're not going to do it. You have not been doing these things, so you need to start really, really small. You can say, I'm going to go to the gym one to two days a week for 30, at least 30 minutes. You have to be very specific because if you leave this up in the air, you're never going to do it. If you say, I'm going to go to the gym two times a week, Okay, what are you going to do? I'm going to go to the gym two times a week for at least 30 minutes and walk on the treadmill. I'm going to go to the gym at least two days a week, and I'm going to find a video on YouTube, and I'm going to do that workout video two times a week. Get really specific with yourself because having that game plan ahead of time eliminates the risk that you won't do it because you'll go into a gym, a space that you're not comfortable yet, and you'll walk out because you have no plan. So make sure you plan ahead for this before you step foot in a space you are not comfortable in. Second step, drinking the water as soon as you wake up. This eliminates the risk that you forget. Drink an entire, for for the next 30 days, I'm going to drink an entire glass of water as soon as I wake up. I'm going to eliminate the risk that I forget because I'm going to put The entire glass of water, you could put lemon in it, you could put salt in it to make it even better, by my bedside table, and I'm going to drink it as soon as I wake up. If you can do that for 30 days, you can keep taking steps forward. Get really specific, get really small, be really actionable, and then once those become habits, a habit is something you do without thinking about it, right? So once those become habit, then you can take the step to say, okay, Maybe now I should focus on the fast food that I'm eating. Maybe I shouldn't eat so much fast food. Then you can go down to, well, I'm not getting much sleep. So maybe I should work on creating a wind down routine so I can get better sleep. Slowly incorporate new habits because every single thing you're changing is new to you. It's foreign. It's not going to come natural. So 
figure out why you're doing it. Why do you want these results? You, you don't want to have diabetes. You want to be healthy. You want to lose the weight, whatever it is for you. Figure out your why. Create your action plan. Pick two areas that you can start with. Get really, really, really specific with those areas all the way down to what time you're going, how long you're going, what food you'll cook, whatever get whatever it is, get really specific and then show up. Show up and create those habits. And if you can keep doing that for one year, you will not even recognize the person you've become in one year. Caitlin, so we're, we're both smiling and giggling over here because this is so close to the framework that we always talk about. And it's funny because you have this conversation enough times with successful entrepreneurs and you see the tendencies, right? You see yeah. that success leaves clues, so does failure, and it becomes pretty obvious how people succeed and also how they fail. And to me, it's always fairly obvious in the world of fitness, I imagine, and in, in, in your world, you see it all the time with someone who goes from the example you just described, which is like, okay, well, I'm never drinking water. I can go a whole week <laughs> without drinking water. And now I'm going to try and drink three gallons a day. And you're like, no, you're not. You're never going to do that. <laughs> And, and you're talking about these really small, actionable things that you can do that eventually become habit. I'd love to hear from you. It's like one of my favorite questions to ask successful entrepreneurs. What's that small action or small habit that you've created that's had the most compound interest in your life? For me, it's going to the gym at the same time every single day because Ooh. I'm so busy and I have a tendency to, as the day goes on, I get more tired, I get less motivated. And I also need that energy to get through my day. I don't do energy drinks. I don't do a ton of caffeine. So for me, I started waking up and I never thought I would be a 5.30 a.m. wake up girl. Like I was like six o'clock early enough. But 5.30, getting up at 5.30 every day gives me the time that I need to go to the gym, get my workout in, come back and be on, be back in time for my calls. That has drastically changed my business because I'm doing something I never thought I would be doing. I'm waking up much earlier than I ever wanted to be waking up. I'm doing something that gives me energy, makes me feel good. And I do it at the same time almost every day. I do take days off from working out. Um, on those days, I'll take my dog for a walk or something. But consistently moving my body at the same time, whether I'm traveling in a hotel, at my house, on vacation, I still get up and do something consistently at the same time because it makes me mentally and physically feel like the person I need to feel like to show up and do the job that I need to do. Mm. I love that. Yeah. And it, well, did, did you find that creating that consistency with your workout routine gave you the confidence and structure to also implement that into your business life? Yeah, a hundred percent. I mean, confidence is gained by what you do consistently, right? You don't become confident by what you do once you come become confident in something when you're able to do it over and over and over and over and over again. And so confidence is earned. It's not something that's given. You have to earn being confident at something. When I first started my business, I was so insecure. I had no confidence around it because I hadn't done it. It wasn't that I didn't think I could become confident in it. It was that I hadn't done it enough to really believe that I was confident in it because I needed to do it more. I needed to do it over and over and over again. And now it's like I could do it in my sleep because I literally do it every single day. So confidence mm. comes from what you do consistently. So no matter what your goals are in life, fitness, health, business, you got to consistently show up to earn that confidence, to be that person who runs the business, who reaches their health goals, who, who has these dreams and executes them. You've got to earn it. Mm. Keelan, you talked earlier about how as your, your business was successful pretty fast and then uh, and then you sort of trying to add all these other things and, and, it, and it upended your success, which we see often. Right. Yeah. Um, what was that thing that made you successful really fast? one-on-one -on -one coaching because what we, what I, what I figured out was we live in a world where we're slowly being taken over by AI and computers. And that's great, right? Like there's so many amazing things that are coming from that, but something a computer can never give you is connection. And on your health journey, the number one thing that every single one of my clients wants is connection. They want to feel like somebody cares about what they're going through. And so I, in the beginning, got a little overwhelmed with one-on-one -on -one coaching because 
people don't realize it takes a lot of energy to be a one-on-one coach, especially in the health and wellness um, industry where people are going through a lot. And I take on all of that energy, the stories, their emotions, and I love, love to do it. But I think I thought, because people around me were saying, oh, well, you'll make more money doing this, or you'll have faster success if you do this. And I got caught up in listening to other people. You know, you need a subscription service. You need a course so you can help more people. And what I really forgot was my business was built on the backbone of connection. And I can't connect with people as as good as I can on -on one-on-one coaching through a subscription service or through a group pre-recorded service. So what I did, I had a breakdown. I cried a lot. And then... (laughs) I decided, I'm like, this isn't all the waste. I created this huge, amazing course that I'm so proud of. But now what I do is I offer that course to my clients in conjunction with my one-on-one coaching so that Mm. they have all the lessons, all the tools, all the on-demand workouts, but they also get that connection with me. And it makes my job easier in a sense of all the lessons they can go in and read and or listen to, and then they can ask me questions. So I'm not having to walk them through 65 lessons anymore that I want to teach them, but I still get to be there for them, support them, connect them, and help them reach their goals. So it was a full circle moment when I got to connect those two aspects of my business together. And in a matter of months, going back to what I knew, my business has skyrocketed again. I'm getting, you know, tons and tons of one-on-one clients and I'm having so much fun with it this time around because I'm doing it in a way that feels good to me. There's, there's something it's, it's connected to connection. Um, and, and they, they support each other by Nikki and I do a fair amount of one-on-one coaching. And I think about this question all the time about like what the value is and what it, it creates and, you talked about AI and I couldn't help but think like there's there's a like a human component of accountability that is really in, in, important in my experience with coaching that there's just something to having another person you have to that you are connected to that you feel accountable to the, the, the plan that you commit to. And just curious if you see that, too, and see similar value. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, my clients tell me every week, like they look forward to come and sharing what they've experienced, the progress they've had, or maybe even some of the setbacks they have. Like they love to come and share their experiences with me because it does, it holds them accountable. I'll say, Hey, you know what? Maybe you took three steps backwards, but that's okay because we can take 10 steps forward this week. And it's just really being relatable and authentic with my clients. And at the end of the day, You'll never have a business if you don't love it, if you aren't authentic, especially a one-on-one coaching practice, like people can smell inauthenticity. So what I've learned is, you know, that's my favorite part about my business is getting to every single week, get emails from my clients telling me about their huge wins. I even love getting emails where they're like, I've had a really, really awful week because then I'm like, How can I help you? How can I serve you? And in a one-on-one coaching business, that's what it's all about. Getting to help women, well, for me, help women become the best versions of themselves because I remember being where they are. And it's not a fun place to be. It's not a fun place to be by yourself. So having that one-on-one support from someone who's been through it, and I'm sure you guys experience this with your one-on-one coaching, you've probably been through similar things that a lot of your clients are going through. It's easier to relate to someone who has been in a similar situation because you really feel like they get it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Definitely. I love that. Caitlin, we always ask towards the end of this podcast, what's the one thing, if somebody's listening to this, what's the one thing that you would want them to take away from this conversation? You know, for me, what I always like to tell people is your health, you you only get one body. Your health is seriously wealth. So if right now you're not taking care of your health, I would ask you to run through the thing that I talked about earlier, go back and listen to it earlier in the podcast, Follow yourself for seven days. Pull apart your goals. What what are some of your health goals? Do you want to lose weight? Do you want to feel better? Do you want to have more energy? Do you want to have more confidence? Pick apart your goals. Go back and listen to that segment that we talked about and start to change your life. 
because you hold the power to do incredible things in your life. You just have to be willing to sit down and do the work. Love that. And Caitlin, if people want to connect with you, where can they find you? I'm Caitlin Shea Spears on all social media platforms. And my website is just CaitlinSpears.com. If you go to my website or my social media, I've got tons of freebies that you can download to get to know me a little bit better. Love that. Thank you so much for being here today. This is personally very informative. I'm excited and I, uh, and I followed you on social. So I'm excited to get to connect with your videos and get some health advice for me too. And thank you for so much for sharing with our, with our listeners today. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for having me. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thanks, Kaylin. Bye, everybody.